This is part 25 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to remove dynamically generated form controls. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. At the moment, on our create employee form, we have one skill group. Now, when I click this add skill button and add another skill group, we want to display delete icon next to every skill group. So this means the user should be able to delete any of the skill groups by clicking this delete icon. Another requirement here is at least one of the skill groups is required for the employee. This means as soon as we delete one of the skill groups by clicking this delete icon, the delete icon from the other skill group should disappear. So the user is not able to delete all the skill groups. So let's look at the HTML required to include this delete icon. This is our create employee component view template and here is our skill name form control HTML. Remember bootstrap grid system is based on 12 columns. The skill name form control label is present within the first two columns. The input element itself is present in the next four columns. This means we are left with another six columns. So we are going to place this delete icon in those six columns. So immediately after this development, let's include another development and we want this development to be six columns wide. So let's use the bootstrap class call SM6 to make it six units wide. Inside this development, let's include a button element. Type equals button. We're going to style the button using the bootstrap classes btn btn-primary. We want a small button, so let's include btn-sm class as well. And finally, we want the button on the right-hand side of the skill group. We want it as far as right as possible. So I'm going to use pull-right class as well. Let's save our changes so far and see what we have got. Notice we have the button displayed, but we do not have this cross on the button. To get that cross on the button, we're going to use bootstrap glyph icons. And I'm specifically going to use this remove glyph icon. So to get this glyph icon on the button, what we got to do is inside the button, include a span element. And on the span element, we have to include glyph icon, glyph icon dash remove CSS classes. So these are the two classes that we have to include on that span element to get this icon on the button. And we want this red color on the button. So instead of using btn-primary, let's use btn-danger. There we go. The button looks like what we have on the slide. Now when I have the mouse over this button, we also want to display the tooltip delete skill so the user knows what is this button for. And to get that tooltip, all we need to do is on the button, include title attribute and set it to delete skill. Notice now when I have the mouse over, we see the tooltip delete skill. Remember our requirement, we do not want this delete icon to be displayed if we have just one skill group because every employee should have at least one skill group. We only want to display this delete icon if we have more than one skill group. So to achieve this, we are going to make use of the loop index variable i. Remember, if the i value is zero, then that means we only have one skill group. If the i value is greater than zero, then we have more than one skill group. And that's when we want to include this development with this delete button. For that, let's include ngf structural directive here. So we want this development to be rendered only if i value is greater than zero. Notice now when we have just one skill group, we don't have the delete icon. Let's add another skill group. Notice now we have the delete icon, but our requirement is we want to be able to display delete icon on all the skill groups as soon as we have more than one skill group because we want the user to be able to delete any of the skill groups. Now to achieve this, we'll have to modify our NGF structural directive condition here. Instead of checking if i value is greater than zero, 
what we can do is check the skills form array and within that skills form array if we have more than one skill group then render this div element with delete button on all the form groups so for that let's get a reference to a root form group our root form group is employee form and within that we have a form array and the name of the form array is skills so we are using get method and passing it the name of our form array and then we can use the length property if it's greater than one then we know we've got more than one skill group within the form array that's when we want this development with the delete button to be rendered on all the skill groups within that form array notice when we have just one skill group we don't have the delete icon let's add another skill group as soon as we do that we see the delete icon next to both the skill groups when we click the icon nothing happens and that's obvious because we did not write the code to actually delete so let's do that now when we click this delete button we want to call a method within our component class so let's include click event binding and let's call the method that we want to call remove skill button click and to this method we want to pass the index of the skill group that we want to remove from our skills form array and remember we are looping over the skills form array right here and here we have the loop index variable i and this variable contains the index of the skill group that we are currently iterating over so let's pass this variable as a parameter to our method remove skill button click our next obvious step is to include this method within the component class this method is not going to return anything so let's set the return type to void and we know this method is going to receive the index of the skill form group that we want to remove from our skills form array so I'm going to call the parameter skill group index you can give it any meaningful name you want and we know this is of type number now we already know skills form array is present within our root form group employee form so let's get a reference to our skills form array by navigating from our root form group employee form so on the root form group we use the get method and to it we pass the name of our form array which is skills now one important point to keep in mind is this get method returns the form array as an abstract control now we need to explicitly typecast this to form array and the reason for that is to remove an element from an array we use remove at method but notice on the abstract control that this get method is returning we don't have that remove at method so we need to explicitly typecast the abstract control to form array once we have done that when we press dot we see remove at method and to this method we pass the index of the element that we want to remove and we are already receiving that index as a parameter so to the remove at method let's pass the index notice when we have just one skill group we don't have the delete icon displayed let's add one more skill group as soon as we do that we have delete icons on both the skill groups now let's add one more skill group we have the delete icon on all the three skill groups and look at the form values specifically our skills form array all the three group values are captured as expected now let's remove one of the skill groups by clicking the delete icon so the Java group is deleted and if we look at the skills form array it's reflected in the values notice within the array at the moment we only have two skill groups and if I delete this last one notice now in the form array we only have one skill group and we have the delete icon removed from this last left skill group because remember we want our employees to have at least one skill group on this slide we have the HTML and the code to remove dynamically created form groups and form controls that's it in this video thank you for watching and have a great day